So in this video, we're going to be talking about medicinal herbs for pain management. The first one on this list is turmeric. This is an East Indian spice that is very well known for its anti-inflammatory benefits. I could talk all day about turmeric, so many benefits. Uh, the pain management, um, the, the anti-inflammatory benefits are mainly due to a compound in it known as curcumin. And this, uh, this is actually one of the many compounds that is present within turmeric, but it is believed to be one of the main ones specifically that is useful for inflammation and pain. Uh, turmeric is useful in muscular pain, uh, migraines and headaches, injury-related pain, osteoarthritis, as well as rheumatoid arthritis, and a condition known as fibromyalgia. And turmeric, when taking it, you have to use something known as a bioavailability enhancer that actually improves the way your body utilizes it by making more of it available to be absorbed. Uh, so bioavailability enhancers are going to be things like black pepper or ginger, which is next on the list. So you just add a pinch of it to the turmeric when you take it, or if you're taking curcumin as a supplement, uh, make sure it contains a bioavailability enhancer. Now, ginger is next on this list, another potent anti-inflammatory, many, many medicinal benefits. I've done an entire video on ginger itself. Now, ginger is highly useful for migraines, as well as menstrual cramps, as well as osteoarthritis as well as muscular pain. Now, when it comes to muscle pain, you want to use the essential oil, mix it in a carrier oil and apply it and massage it onto the body. And uh, ginger is highly, highly beneficial for many conditions. Again, I could talk all day about that. Next is cat's claw. Cat's claw is a very popular medicinal herb from South and Central America. And it's very useful for rheumatoid arthritis. Next on this list is white willow bark. Now, you've probably heard of this. Um, it's also very popular, and uh, it contains a compound known as salicin, which is um, it basically when you consume it, it, it metabolizes it into salicylic acid, which is a precursor to aspirin. So it basically has the same effects as aspirin. And uh, so it can also thin your blood, just like aspirin can. And so it's, it's useful in conditions like lower back pain, uh, as well as... Um, headaches and migraines, and osteoarthritis. Next is butter burr. Now, I really like butter burr. This is actually a potent, um, apart from its pain uh, benefits, it's also useful for allergies. Uh, butter burr is useful in the case of migraines and headaches for preventing migraines. The same goes for the next one, feverfew. This is also a medicinal herb useful for migraines and headaches. Chamomile is next in this list. Chamomile is one of my favorites, to be honest with you. Uh, it's probably one of the best medicinal herbs, among a few others, for female, female uh, pain management specifically. That's because it's useful for two types of pain that women experience. Uh, one is breast pain, also known as mastalgia, and the other is menstrual pain and menstrual cramps in a condition known as dysmenorrhea. Uh, it's also useful... Uh, for um, carpal tunnel syndrome. And now most people associate uh, chamomile with its benefits for sleep and um, helping you to relax, but it has many, many benefits beyond that. It's also useful for migraines. So, uh, so chamomile has many benefits. And, and just because I mentioned that it being useful for women, I'll tell you about another benefit it has. It's also highly useful for managing the symptoms of PMS. There's a really interesting clinical trial. I'll also post that in the description of this video. Next is stinging nettle. Now, most people associate stinging nettle, also known as nettle, uh, for its uses related to allergies, as well as for hormone health. But the thing about it is it's also useful for certain types of pain, specifically musculoskeletal pain, as well as osteoarthritis. Next in this list is ashwagandha, another popular medicinal herb, mainly known for its adaptogen properties, which is basically means it helps the body adapt to stress and cope with stress by improving your strength, improving various metabolic factors uh, that can be affected by stress, as well as reducing the main stress hormone that is known as cortisol. But when it comes to pain management, ashwagandha has shown a lot of potential uh, in a clinical trial on patients uh, that had osteoarthritis. Uh, 
very, very useful. Next in this list is Bitter Apple. This is not a very well-known medicinal herb, but it is a powerful, powerful um, Ayurvedic medicine. And so uh, what this can be used for is a condition known as diabetic neuropathy. Uh, that's basically where the, the nerves in the hands and feet basically start to degenerate and they produce this sort of burning pain, uh, very common in diabetes. Neuropathy is associated with many conditions, but butter apple has been studied uh, in clinical research for diabetic neuropathy. Uh, now, you have to be careful with butter apple. Most of these are generally considered safe. Uh, if, if it's used correctly. But bitter apple can actually have some pretty bad side effects if you don't know what you're doing and you screw up. So please don't try to be, uh, don't try to be a hero and take it on your own and think you can handle it and you'll be fine if you just follow the suggested dosages because suggested dosages are not the same as clinically effective dosages. That's just what the company puts on the bottle uh, for you to get some benefit without any adverse effects. But we want you to get maximum benefits there's no point in getting just minor, minor benefits and then thinking that these so-called supplements are not that useful when the truth is you're not taking it correctly because you don't have the clinical training or any sort of training in how to use this. Remember, get your advice from somebody who specializes in this, not the person at the cash register in the health food store. No offense to anybody who works there. Uh, but make sure the person who's providing you with your information on how to use it knows what they're talking about. Now, there are many other things that can be used for pain as well. There are different modalities. There are different essential oils that are useful for different types of pain. Uh, there's also certain nutrients like magnesium, which is great for muscular pain, uh, muscle cramps, uh, conditions like fibromyalgia. Uh, there's benfotiamine, which is basically a fat-soluble form of vitamin B1, which is great for diabetic neuropathy. Um, there's many, many other modalities as well. But when it comes to medicinal herbs, these are some of the most common ones and some of the things it can be used for. So I hope this information has helped you. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can do so through my website, drnishal.com. I do online video call consultations. So no matter where you are in the world, you can get in touch with me and I can help you. And I'll see you in the next video.